Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. This is Justin Peden here. We went and did a little squirrel hunting this morning, and I know you guys would have liked to have come along, but early this morning I wanted to see if I could hit the limit without uh, fooling with the camera and all that. And a lot of you guys that film know how difficult it is to hunt and be successful hunting while self filming. Uh, I also don't want nobody else going along with me filming because they may not be as quiet in the woods or move around like you do. It's easier to go by yourself. So, uh, but we did got the limit. We got eight squirrels. That's the limit here in Mississippi for a morning. And then after lunch, you can go again. You can have 16 as a total for the day. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squirrels. Uh, now what I'm fixing to do is split the guts. I'm just going to split them up the middle and get the guts out. We're going to leave the skin on, everything intact. We're going to put them in our, back in our plastic bag that we had here. This is what we... I always keep a plastic bag with me when I'm squirrel hunting to put them in. It keeps blood from getting all on everything else. If they fall in the creek and get wet, it keeps that off of everything. It just It's a lot simpler. However, while we was out... I'll drop a picture of this in the video. Look at this clump of oysters. Now I've got a sack full of them. So we've had a pretty good harvest, but we've got the canoe with us. We fixing to uh, unload it in the creek. We got our fishing poles. We're gonna go see if we can catch some crappie. So. I'm going to get the guts out of these and starch them away, get the canoe in the water, and we're fixing to go catch some crappie. We're going to take our shotgun with us. We've got all day to spend in the woods today. That's why I'm going to get the guts out. So we may shoot some more squirrels. I did see a big pig this morning. I've got my bow with me. We're going to do a, a little bow hunting this afternoon. So don't know what the day live will bring, but follow along with us, and we're going to see what happens. right here in this hole we've got a jig pole right here and y'all I'm not going to be able to get no real good footage I know that's going to be disheartening to you but and y'all lay squirrels still running everywhere there's one on the ground right over there see him going up that bank It's still early. We got the limit though. I got the guts out of them. I wanted to see if these white perch in this deep hole would bite. Oh, we missed him, y'all. I'll try to get y'all some decent footage. Alright. Oh. Y'all. Y'all, that is what we want. Y'all see that? We won't never get that boat in. We don't have a dip net. That's a grunnel. We have done hung a grunnel on the view. Y'all, it'll be a miracle if we wear him down and get him in this boat. I got four pound test line. Two little white perch fish for the doggone grunt. Well. <laughs> Maybe y'all will get a good look at him. I don't know how to get him. I really don't. He's hooked good. <laughs> if I whack him with the paddle, he's going to come off. If I grab him with my hand, I, oh, I don't know. Let me get this 
boat paddle out of your way. The things I get myself into. Y'all, if I pick this up and get this thing in a boat, I don't know how lucky I'll have been. He is in the boat. How in the world did we manage that on four pound test line, folks? Now y'all, I know I ain't got good footage of the cameras too close. I got the tripod strapped down. And he may get back in the water, but Grunnel. Y'all said, wanted to know if I could catch them on a fluke. We ain't done that. But a dadgum Bobby Garland jig on a 32nd ounce head. No, that's a 16th ounce head. <laughs> Four pound test line on a jig pole. <laughs> well. I wouldn't grunnel fishing, but <laughs> y'all lay still grunnel rolling the water everywhere. There's a good chance that we catch another. What we got? Look at him. Look, look right here. Look right here. Ain't real big. But it is a white perch. That is what we was after. And we just jigging. Bouncing that old blue ice around. That's what, look at there. Look at <laughs> Alright y'all, that's a pretty good one there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one there. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's in focus. I don't know. Look at the ground hitting the water up through there. See them rolling? That is all ground. Doggone blue brim, look at there. Well, y'all have had the camera off, but we have done it again. Oh, that's a bass. I thought we had a grunt. Look at him. That's a pretty good bass. We're going to put him back. I don't know. It may be cool enough weather to... Oh, yeah, we got him. Yeah, we got him. <laughs> bass on a jig y'all we're gonna have all kind of fish i changed jigs i ain't went to the blue ice i got this little old tube jig on there the other one it was split kept sliding down i hope that ain't real big one. but he is aware in that pole y'all look at him boy he was doing some fight look at that we got one of everything now. Huh? And y'all, y'all, I used to believe you needed the heaviest line there was to fish. And the biggest hooks, that's a decent little old catfish. Hey, we grocery shopping today. <laughs> being, being our president has done, caused everything to go sky high. We can't afford to go buy groceries no more. <laughs> so we just come down here and we see what we, I mean, we're going <laughs> to. That Grunnel, he's, he's determined to fly. With a jig and four pound test line. We have caught grunnel, catfish, brim, white perch, everything but a large snapping turtle. 
But if you skin one of them on YouTube, they will crucify you for that. But we'll do it again anyway. Well, hell, I got my line hung up in the camera. It's after lunch. We can start back killing squirrels, technically. But we fish. We got a floorboard full of fish, but I did see a squirrel right up here, and it's kind of on my way out. Yeah, I see him on the ground. We're going to see if we can get a shot at him with a shotgun here out of the canoe. See him at the moment. Yeah, dude, he's up on a tree limb. Almost dead in front of us there. Yeah, he's on the side of that tree. He's going up the tree right over there. Y'all see that one on the ground up there? It's gonna be loud. That right there is what that Bowie knife is good for. He was trying to get away when I got over there. Instead of grabbing him and beating his head or shooting him again. So we did get him. Like I said, when I got there to get him, he was trying to run off, so I took that Bowie knife, put him out of his misery. I don't like to have to shoot him again. But I ain't grabbing him with my hand, neither. All right, I don't know what our chances are. But directly in front of the boat behind that tree, there's one on the bank. We're going to see if we can slip up there and get a shot at him. I'm having to make too much racket. Now I'm trying to see. He was in them cypress knees right over there somewhere. I'm sure he done took to running up a tree or something. Well, I reckon he got away. He's somewhere he is. Oh no, I see him. I see him. He's right up there. One sec. He hit the ground. Still on it. Now Siri's over here hollering at me. Tell Siri to shut up. You'd think you could lock one of them phones where she wouldn't do all that talking when you're trying to hunt. And especially in it on silent. I'm over here trying to shoot squirrels. And Siri, she, I don't know what she's looking for. She's trying to figure something out. That woman's crazy. Let's go see if we can find our squirrel. I'm gonna have to leave y'all in the boat. I'll come back with it. Get my, get me wedged up in this tree right here. Oh, hell. Come on. Well, we did good on that, and we didn't have to scalp him. I think it was about three today I had to scalp. That there, I didn't have to pull old buoy out on him. That's, that's two more we got. Now, y'all, the reason I'm killing more than normally, I go home with about four squirrels. That's plenty for me to go home and cook. However, this trip, I am finna put some stuff in the in the freezer because I'm serious about groceries is getting 
crazy. Uh, yeah, I can still afford them, but I'd rather eat this stuff. Uh, so I am going to be putting some squirrels, and I may put some of these crappie fillets in the, in the freezer and, and see what happens. I'm not a big fan, like I said in the last video, about putting fish in the freezer because once they go in there they kind of get forgot about but here lately we've been eating out of it a good bit not because we can't afford to buy groceries but man it's just against my principles to pay twelve dollars for a pack of ground beef that i was buying for three dollars and something so i can come down here and I, it it ain't really that hard to kill a bunch of squirrels i i don't like to just see if i can kill 25 or 30. uh i'm gonna try to stay legal and kill the limit so we've got uh 10 now we can kill about six more i think we can do it but we fixing to go over here and try a new hole uh one that i fished in last year and see if the white perch will bite in it so we'll load everything up on the buggy take the canoe over there but we got a little ways right here to paddle out we may get a shot at another squirrel so in fact there may be one right here across the creek over here throwing tupla gum balls i was going to show y'all what a tupla gum tree is in fact, I'm under one. It's got these little black tupla gums. See if I see one on the ground here. Because they love to eat them things. Uh, yeah, here's here's tupla gums right here. I'm going to show you. Now the leaf on them, this is a dead one. That leaf looks like this on a tupla gum. Now, this is a dead. They green, obviously, when they're on the tree. But it's kind of a pointed leaf that's tupla gums it's just an oval shape they not hard like a nut but they have a seed inside there and that seed and it, it's a big old seed let me wash this one off you can tell a little bit about it that's what a tupla gum seed looks like but that is I hope you can tell what I'm holding up. But anyway, just try to give you a little education in the middle of all this fun. I went out there and looked around just a minute. Found a nice piece of lighter pine and uh, some bark off of a tulip uh, poplar tree. I carry the rest of that home with me. Y'all didn't know I had my tomahawk with me, did you? Now people ask me sometimes why I prefer a bigger knife versus a bushcraft small knife. Oh, they say you can't process wood and do all that. With Number one, I do not baton wood. Uh, there's no purpose in the area that I live in and that I'm normally in to have to baton wood. I'll take the camera and I'll show you precisely what I mean here in just a second. I am going to use a lighter for this uh, just because it's quick, fast, and easy. I do have a ferro rod, fire kit, all that with me. But I do not use it unless it's necessary. I shouldn't have any trouble lighting all this up. And I've got it somewhat scattered everywhere here, but I can pick my shavings up. Kind of put this pine in a pile here. I've got several big splinters of this fat wood. I don't want too much of it on there because I don't want it to. I'm on what, what I'm fixing to do is cook part of that grill. Uh, I'm gonna be down here most of the day. I had brought some junk to eat just in case I didn't catch nothing, but we've had a good day so.
we'll let that catch up. Alright, just right there. We ain't even got to go nowhere. You see this? This is laying on the ground. Right there. Everywhere I look, these down tree limbs, everywhere. There's absolutely no reason to be batoning wood. You start with this. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to go to beating on your knife to build a fire. Now granted, it is a dry day today. We haven't had a lot of rain in a while. We got rain coming in tomorrow. Temperatures will be dropping back down. Thank goodness. I like cool weather. You see, just that fast, I, I needed not baton any wood. And I'm choosing mostly or I'm choosing exclusively all hardwoods. I don't want any pine limbs because I'm going to cook directly over this. We're going we're gonna to attempt to fillet this ground with our Bowie knife. And we've got a grill grate with us. We're going to cook it right here over this fire. We're going to get us a bit of coal. And we're going to cook him probably in the skin. This. And there's no no reason to be beating on a knife blade, folks. I don't care what the so-called experts tell you. It don't make sense. Now, if you're in a place and the situation calls for it, yes, by all means, know how to baton wood. I and mean, I ain't saying that you don't need to know that skill. But there's no reason to just automatically go into doing that every time and, and plan on doing that. I, I don't really... I can baton this buoy knife. But I'm not going to unless this... If you're in a situation where there is no limbs, maybe you're not in the woods and you, you know, found somebody's log pile in their yard you snuck up to. And you see, I hadn't even had to chop any wood. You know, in the woods, we didn't plan this. We just kind of, by the seat of our britches, are down here. Oh, but now I know these woods very well, and I know where, but everywhere I could take you anywhere down here. I could take you anywhere down here and just randomly pick up enough wood to build a, a huge fire in just no time. Y'all, this is new. I have never filleted anything with a bowie knife. But I wanted to know if I could. I did put some water in there on them fish. Now, see, he's still alive. You want them still alive whenever you get ready to clean them. Uh, however, I try to be somewhat humane. We'll see if we can hit his brain. I don't know if I can or not. For two reasons. One, I don't want him. There we go. I think we got him in the brain. I don't know. We're going to. I think we got it then. We're gonna be somewhat humane with him anyway. He'll probably have some nerve floppage. Now this blade is a little wide for this, so. Oh. I think we can do it though. If I can.
Okay, now we're gonna eat, cook him in that skin, put that skin side down. So, and this is not a huge uh, grill. Both in for those of you that's new. I'm sure there'll be a first time watcher in this video. Subscribe to our channel. We try to do all kind of stuff here. I think you'll enjoy it if you like the outdoors. And now we did lose a little bit of meat here. I'll see if I can. I'm a scavenger. I hate to waste anything. But anyway, that's good. Enough. We're gonna throw this out here for the critters to eat. There'll be some happy coon or otter or possum come along and I'm gonna go wash my hands and my knife. We will not wash this. I know somebody's gonna ask. I do not put water on my fish. I've got a rag somewhere in here and I'll wipe this down is what I'll do. And then we're gonna we don't have any seasonings, anything. I do have a grill grate in my bag. Found me a couple of nice logs right here. See my little grill grate I got there. We're gonna go ahead with them flames and put this on there. Now it would be better with a little bit of seasoning, but we really didn't plan on growing. Ah. Oh. We're gonna do one at a time. I was gonna try to get them over there where I could put two on there, but. Done the stuff. There we go. We might can get the on there now. Huh? Alright. Reason number two to have a big buoy. You see how I can work over this fire right here? Woo, hot. Makes a good spatula. Man, 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 y'all. This turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank the Lord Jesus for a beautiful day in the woods. But y'all, I am falling in love with this Bowie knife. I mean, I can fillet with it. I've proved that. I can process firewood with it. I can baton this. It has a long enough spline that I can baton it if I need to. But I more than likely will never baton it. Um... Uh, it's razor sharp. I've skinned all them squirrels, or I didn't skin them. I just gutted them with it. Uh, I can cook over the fire with this thing. I've dispatched squirrels with it. I have chopped limbs today out of my way when I was getting into areas that I needed to get into. So I, I'm, that's probably the, the type of knife that you'll see me with now. And I, this holster is big enough and and i've got it designed to where i can keep it out of my way so see like i'm squatted down here and it's not a problem i was worried about that because if it's digging into my side or i'm hanging on it or it's hanging limbs i'm not going to put up with it so far this has worked out well so pushing my knife i like a bowie knife i got the last of my coffee here we're gonna ease that on on there and warm that coffee up right there I had it in my Stanley thermos. I'm sure somebody wants to know what I was going to do about a plate. Well, don't you worry about me in a plate. You see how I did that? 
I know one of you thought I didn't really have a rag. I gotta clean my table off. Can't be eating in all that blood. I done filleted fish and skint squirrels and everything else right there. But I poured water on it out of that cooler, which probably wasn't no cleaner, but. Anyway, we got stuff down here where we can, where we can see what we is a doing now. Now I'm not gonna probably eat with that big knife. I'm gonna throw that back there with me, y'all. I got a bottle of water right here, but I do have my coffee. Get my coffee back over here with me. Sit it there, I do have some water. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and put that fire out here directly with that. Get these ribs right here. Oh yeah. Look how that meat just coming apart. You can peel them ribs right out of there. Mm. Now this would be a lot better, y'all, with some seasoning. Unfortunately, we don't have any. Dang, still pretty tasty though. If I'd have knew I was going to catch a grunnel, I'd have had my garlic salt and my lemon pepper. You know I'm going to have that in Brother Tony Satchery's. I'd have put them on it. But leaving it in that skin on the bottom with the scales and all just holds that all together so that you can grill it. It'd be hard to grill it without doing that. Yeah, you want to buy it? Haha. <laughs> we didn't have one today. Boy, it is good though. I thought I was gonna have to eat that spam. I stuck a, I stuck a can of spam in my, in my uh, bag there. I said, boy, times get hard, cause like you know, I come camping, fished all over everywhere in the water. When when it's flooded down here, it's hard to catch fish. But I ain't catch no fish. Found all kind of mushrooms, but it's hard to just cook mushrooms right over a fire. That chicken of the woods, I'll be honest with you, it ain't no good just over an open fire. That grunnel, though, I can eat that. Home fly, this is mine. You go catch your own grunnel with four-pound test line in a jig. Y'all ain't believing it. Which, now, this wasn't no big one, neither. It was a fairly small grunnel. Still pound and a half, two pounds. And you know what a two pound fish put up a fight now when you got four pound test line and a jig pole. <laughs> Man, we think to go out here though to this other hole. The water's so low I can't get my boat, my canoe out there. I walked out there already. So we're going to walk out there and set the camera up on the bank and we're going to fish from the bank with our mini rod and see if we can hang some crappie out here. I think we can, but you can't fish with that big long jig pole on the bank. You'll be tangled all up in them limbs. I why I like them little short rod. Well, I'm going to eat this. We'll go out here and catch some more fish here in just a second. Y'all, I love my swamp now. So it is bad to dry. We'll make sure you put this stuff out. Now that log air has been burning. We want to soak that down good. And I'll roll it back over there out of the way. This one I know was burning. But it's easy to get careless and think, well, it's clean or it's whatever. It's not, though. Make sure if you're going to build a fire down here, put it out good. That ought to be enough to do the trick. Oh. 
Well, it was a little bit of a trick to get here. The sun, the water is rolling. And they was ducks got up everywhere. Technique the same as all of my bank fishing. We're gonna throw it out there like we've been doing. Let it fall a minute. Read it slow. Y'all, I just wanted you to get the grasp of what was going on in this water. I mean, they just like constantly rolling the water. Leave us a duck down there, you see that? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm trying to get it on film. We're going to play with it in the editing. See if we can slow some of it down and see what it is. I about know most of it's going to. Now that one was right there if I could have got it. But anyway, with all this going on, I couldn't get the crappie to bite at all. Not in this hole. They here, or was. That's an oyster. You can see this color, it's got a stem coming off right there, and it's kind of a brown. But that ain't nothing. These dead dogs, you see this is a blowover. You see the roots up yonder sticking up? So you can tell, there's my hand. These things are fairly large. I'm going to pick one because I've got plenty. I'm not going to take any of these. I had to cut the camera off to focus it, but see them gills? The color. See them things? It's pretty large. They're all over this log. And see like this? I, I don't even know what this is. That's a hard. But there's a bunch of horses on there. They're growing in clusters. Well, y'all, we finally got everything back to the house, huh? We're gonna clean all these fish that we caught this morning. Uh, I'm gonna fillet most of all of it, probably. Um, uh, take them on and brown. I may scale these few little old brim that we got. We wound up with three brim. Uh, we didn't just wear them out. We had one, two, three, four, five, six crappie, and I threw about five or six back. Uh, but now squirrels, let's go drive a field day. We got a pile of squirrels. I think I wound up for the day with 11. Uh, and we got a drain in this floor. I'm just going to pour this out right here. But I kept them in that water to keep them from getting too hot. Uh, obviously, I took the gut side of them down there. Bet you can get a look at them right there. But anyway, the camera battery is about to die. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.